Do you have this problem with your oven with the heating element? Even though it's supposed to be pulsing at a low rate, it just stays on, or it doesn't pulse correctly, or sometimes it doesn't come on. I'm going to show you how to fix it. Okay, so this oven I've worked on previously, I did do a video on this previously, I think when the front element here was blowing up. This element here, when you turn it on low, it just comes on, stays on, doesn't pulse at all. Right? It doesn't matter what you've got to see here, it just stays on. Right? So it overboils all the time. This one here apparently started playing up as well, where it's erratic. It doesn't always pulse correctly, or it doesn't come on or something like that. So apparently this one plays up too. Like PC working when I test it, so I, I don't know what's going on there, but I'm going to replace it anyway because, you know, why not? I'm going to be in it, so it's not much more effort. These two controls up here, I'm going to replace those. So the very first thing we've got to do is to make sure it's safe, and that is to make sure that the oven has power turned off to it. And then obviously you have to verify that on the oven itself. There's also a wall switch by the oven, which I'm also going to turn off. I'm also going to turn the switch off as well. So I've got two levels of isolation between me and the power supply at least, and then I'll verify in the oven. Just to be absolutely sure, I've definitely got the right supply lines. You never quite know. I, I know it's okay, but for you, you should definitely check that, because this is mains voltage, and could kill yourself if you're not careful. So this is the actual simmer stat, which I'm going to be putting in one of them. I've got two of these. I did show some mailbag previously. Yeah, it's just a 240 watt simmer stat. It's an MP101. You can see it on the back there, maybe. So yeah, I've got two of these to put in, because one of them is definitely gone, well one controller is definitely gone, and the other one is suspicious, it looks like it's probably failing. So we're going to go put these in. So I've got to drag the oven out, and uh, go from there. Right, so I've got to drag the oven out, now I've got to be careful I don't scratch the floor, I did kind of scratch it when I put the oven in the first place. I might have got a bit told off by the missus. Uh, yeah, anyway, so drag the thing out, we'll pull it back off and I'll show you how to fix it. This will be fine the uh, 18 months with the crud that's falling down the sides. <laughs> so the problem with fitted ovens like this. There's no particularly horrible surprises at least, that's always a nice thing. So we have to take off this top panel here, which you can see once I get this thing spun around. The wire's a little bit short. It is what it is. We get this done. I need to get my multimeter as well, so I can verify the power's off once we get this back off here and be absolutely sure we're safe. That's important. Now, ideally, you would unplug the cable that goes to the oven in order to make sure it's definitely isolated. But in my case, it's really hard to get to that plug to unplug it. It's right behind the cabinetry and it's, it can get to it, but it's really awkward. So I'd rather just prove it's safe by tune testing, and that's fine. So this is the cover I've got to take off, and on here, you might be able to see here, there's a circuit diagram of the actual oven. That's going to be really handy. Actually, you might get you a bit closer and you have a close look at that. So it's a couple of these devices here we've got to replace. Now this is like an optional version, there's like two different versions of the oven. So they've got both options shown here. Or well, it's an extra hob or something like that, I can't exactly what it is now, but there's an option. And that's not included. So it's just these MP101s that are on here. Hopefully that's all we've got to change. I'll find out when I go to pull the thing open. Alright, so let's get this thing open. I've offered enough. As you can see, the oven's got a bit of a grime, so I'm not cleaning it all off before I put the thing back. All right, let's try and lift this out of here. There we go. It's got like a lip. Just here it slots in. See that? Anyway, so that just hooks into there, so that's what holds it up. Let's put this out of the way. Somewhere. These are the simmer stats up here. What I've got to do before I touch anything is again make sure it's safe. So what I've actually got is I've got my meter here. 
I've already got the probes shoved into a PowerPoint to prove that there's definitely the meter's definitely working, right? It's always a first important step is you verify your meter is working. There you go, 242 volts, right? That's my current line voltage. So I know the meter's definitely working and that's all good. Right? You always verify first. Then you verify that this equipment you're working on is actually dead. This actually test voltages. Now you can see the meter and all that sort of stuff. Let's be sure it's definitely safe. So let's go to the frame of the machine and just probe around. Yeah, nothing there. Gets a neutral, nothing there. Of course, neutral and phase, which is definitely should have something if there's a problem. Nothing there, so there's no power on that socket there. So the whole thing should be dead because these are always on. I'm confident this has got no power going to it. If you're unsure, you go straight to the junction box, which is just down there. But I'm not going to bother with that. Okay, so I'll get this out of the way now. And now we start actually looking at repair. So we've got these two knobs we've got to pull off for start. So I've got to take two rear stats out. Uh, similar stats, good. Come on, rear stats. They're similar stats. Um, knobs off. You just pull them and they come off the shelves. And I've got to get these nuts off. Oh, I've got to bring a spanner. Well, luckily I've got my trusty tool here. Actually, I should show you taking knobs off, shouldn't I? You really? Ah. It's alright. You can imagine it, can't you? There's two nuts. It's obvious what you do. There's two nuts. You unscrew them. And they'll come out. So let's loosen off this first. And I'll do them by hand after. All right. So the important thing to do is to make sure that what you've got matches what's in here. Yeah, that way there, those match up to this, which is like a link, this is the link across there. Turn on the side, which is the pilot. You've got a neutral down here. And you've got the white one here, which is the actual load. Smart test here, load, which is the output. So that's all fine, it all matches up. Now these terminals can be a bit hard to get off. Mainly GS pliers, we'll see how we go. So, all I'm going to do is I'll take them off and I'll put them onto the new one. That way, you don't get the wires mixed up. Okay, so those two go on here. Like that. That way, you can't stuff it up by crossing the wires over and stuff like that. But always, you can reference the other ones next to it as well if we had the wired up because you're pretty much the same. So, here we've got this. This has got one of these stuff like adapter, so you can actually piggyback connect it on. So that would go on there. So you've got this wire here kind of wrapped around it. Anyway, I'll sort that out later. Actually, I won't put that on yet because that's a bit awkward in the way. So the white wire here, pull this one off. You put that one on, that won't be in the way. I've got two more wires here which are a bit awkward, so I'm just going to take the center set out now in order to get to it. I actually need it to be in the frame to make it easy to pull the wires off. So, so we've got this other connection here, which goes on the side, and we've got this other one, the red and the blue here, which are piggybacked, which go to the bottom one. So I'm just going to do the same thing. So I did the bottom one first. And there's that wire come off that piggyback thing, so I have to pop that back on the second. You can see that. So it goes on there. And then that can go onto the bottom. That. that went on a little bit easier than white. No, it seems okay. This is the one that's on the side, it's got to come off. Got to come off. <laughs> that's really tight, that one. This will give us some help. This has got a jumper on it already, but it's no connection on it, so don't be confused by that.
right. And that's what goes on the side just over here. Avoid trying, well, try and avoid tangling wires up as you're putting things on and off. So I don't think now you've got to put this one on the side of there. We'll get it in place first and then put that one on. Take the knot off first. Properly, yep. Let's tie them now because that's that one done. Then I can go back on. Done. Next one. Same price again, absolutely no different. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to change views and get a bit closer so you can, now you've done the overall view, I'll get, try and get you closer view and hopefully you can see without my hands getting in the way too much. And here you can see there's the nut and everything on there. If I pull that knob off that shaft, and there's the nuts, so it's got to undo that. It'll come out. Okay, so now we've got this. I can see now I've got a really good view of the back of that now. So you can see in more detail what I was doing. You might get shadows in my hands in the ways, but I've got the light just through here, so it's okay. So, same thing again, so I pulled these wires off. Now on there, let's get a new one out of the packet actually. Put the wires straight onto the new one, that way they don't get mixed up. So that's pretty simple to follow it back up again, anyway. So, same orientation, put that wire on there. That. that wire off. That one's going to be really tight, of course. Let's give it a hand again. This one's going to be a bit in the way, I think, so I might just leave that one hanging off the side. I just know I've got to go to that one to bring to loop it around. So what I actually might just do is just pull these off with the pliers because it's going to be easier than trying to wiggle things. All right. So I know that one goes on the bottom, on that point there. Try to get it in shot. All right, so it's on the bottom of that one, just there. Same place. There isn't a second terminal, but we do have the bottom terminal here, which will pop out. Yeah, I just pulled it off the other side, it's great. Alright, we'll put that on. That's that bottom terminal there. Okay. So I pulled so hard I yanked the other connection off the other side. So I'm going to stick that back on. I'll do that afterwards once I get this other stuff out of the way. So the side terminal here, it's got to come off. I mean, by the way, I should be using an insulated plier for this. But it's off anyway, so it doesn't actually matter. Look at that one. Now we can get this simister out of the way. Put the new one in and put those last connections back on again. Let's get a new nut. Tighten up before I forget. Should be using the corpse panel for this, but again, you don't want to do this too tight anyway, it's only plastic shafts and stuff like that. This one goes on the side. Like that. This one loops, untangle it, loops to the top one. 
Now I've got the wire which I pulled on which has gone over the side there so I'm going to reattach that. But that's basically done. It's a bit awkward to see in there, I might have to pull that one back out to actually have a I'll do I'll fix it up and I'll come back. Okay, so I reattached that because I was going to be in the way of the camera so you wouldn't see anything anyway. So it's, it's all reattached now. That one I pulled off accidentally. So that's fine. So we'll spin this around. But well, I'll move the camera around. And we'll verify that it actually works. We'll power it up. Before I put the bank back on. And prove that it actually worked correctly before I do anything else. Okay, so I'll turn the power back on again. Let's try elements. And that should pulse. You should be able to see it go red and then come back. Get it high enough. There you go, it pulsed red, and then off again. So that seems to be working. So slightly more so I can get higher higher brightness on it. So you might be able to see it on camera, but yeah, that's that's definitely working okay. That's coming on off. Let's try the rear one. Do the same thing. Right rear, I should say. That's come up. And it's turned off. So, yeah, that seems to be working. Let's turn it down slightly. What these work by is a biometallic strip. So, it bends inside the switch. And by turning knobs, you're changing the pressure on that biometallic strip. So, it depends how rapidly it turns on and off. So it changes its timing effectively. So yeah, anyway, it does seem to be working. Sometimes it will be so fast you don't see it glow. It's still putting a heat, but it doesn't get to, it doesn't get to the point where it glows. So that's fine. I could hear it clicking before when it didn't come up glowing. I could hear it doing its thing. So it is working. That's a win. And also a verification that it's all working the okay, cases down here, I'll show you that. Is this glowy bit right here saying it's hot. So yeah, that's also a nice indication that things are working like they should be. These controls are very cheap. Right, this is a Simpson Jupiter, but the same control is used in many, many ovens. Fisher and Pokal, other brands, lots of different ovens, there's dozens and dozens of them. All right? So although your oven may not look exactly the same as this, it might be exactly the same control. Now again, bear in mind the safety aspects, making sure you're safe. All times make sure you're safe. Um, that's the most important thing. If you're not really sure what you're doing or you don't have a way of testing this, actually like you don't have a multimeter to verify that it's, it's safe to work on, then don't do it. Get someone that is proficient at it. You know, your, your safety is the most important thing. But these controls, they're very cheap. They're like $16, I think I pay for these, New Zealand. So that's the cheapest rate. Um, there's a, you can get them other places, like I've seen them for $26 or even $50. Right? So they are around, so just shop around. Um, this is from Appliance Hub, I think it was called. And that's the place I found the best price for them. Um, but yeah, it's so Simpson Jupiter, but it's also on various Simpson ovens and, and all the Fish and Paco and lots of other brands as well. So they're dead simple things. So you saw how easy it is to change it and that fixes that, that problem. So it's better to replace the control than dispose of the oven and get a new oven because it's a $16 control. All right, you know, you have to replace all four of them. That's only like 64 bucks. So what? It's better than a new oven, isn't it? So yeah, share the video, share it around. People know how to do it, you know. It's, it's easy to do, but again, you have to make sure you're safe. That's the most important thing. Put it back together. Power is off again. Again, always make sure you're safe. Super important, I don't want anyone killing themselves by trying to follow my instructions. That'd be bad. I'm going to give us a clean before I slide it back in because it's a bit gross. Then I'll put it back and yeah, you're done. Thanks for watching.
subscribe, give us a thumbs up if you like this call in a video and you want to see more, click the bell icon so that way you get notifications about my new videos so that way you don't miss anything because otherwise you might not be told about my videos you might not be notified about them so make sure you click that bell and then you get notified about my new videos when they come up so I thought it was a bit of a supplemental thing we'd have a look at what's inside these things so I've got obviously two of them now and they both fold in different ways one doesn't turn off and the other one is erratic so we'll have a look and see if we can actually see what's going on inside them so there's a little tab just here which needs to be pushed in at the same time as I'm trying to lift it up same this side, tab there, which needs to be pushed in so let's see if I can sort of get a start on it like that then I'll push that tab in or something just get a screwdriver see if I can do this without snapping the tab off and see if I can do this I was showing you what I'm doing. That's a pretty stiff tab. Okay. Uh, I'm worried about breaking this off. Also trying to show you what I'm doing as well as not helping. That is not going to pop out. Right. So I'm going to have to leave it out of the casing off instead. Leave it outwards instead of pushing the pin in. That might be the other way of doing it. I've forgotten. I did look at it when I did the other one. There we go, it's popping out there. Alright. And the other tab was in there. I'm trying to lever it out from there. No, it's broken the casing anyway, so it doesn't matter. Alright, there's one. So, what do we find? There's a bimetallic strip and a switch mechanism. Alright, so it's got this little strip in here too, which presses against it to form a contact between this terminal and there. Now that is disintegrating, that's just all folding up. See that? There's like a little tab just here, but it's just like. That doesn't look great. So that's what's wrong with that one. It's delaminating for the board. The actual strip itself looks okay. One of these I did previously, the strip had actually moved. This thing here had actually started coming off. So this one looks like it's delaminating off there, so therefore it's no good. Go look at the next one. Open up the same way. Casing broken. Yeah, I, th I thought they were. They're not really meant to be opened up again. They are pretty much single use devices. Okay, there we go. And these aren't really meant to be repaired, they're just meant to be thrown around the place when they fail. So, yeah. What do you find in this one? Well, that seating part with a um, little metal piece inside there touches that still looks fine unlike the other one things I did a comparison maybe is that side by side comparison right well, so you can see this one's delaminating and well that's like a seam on the board of course but that's looking really dodgy there you go and this one here is looking fine it's all flat like it should be right so that's what that's wrong with that one what's wrong with this one yeah, uh, hmm. I mean, that's the biometallic strip here, right? In this area here. And there's the contacts. The contacts look pretty bad, actually. Yeah, I think it's probably just bad contacts because it, what happened, it wouldn't turn on. So it probably is just crap on the contacts. You see that gunk in there? So you can see the pitted contact there. So that's probably what's wrong. Show you the other side as well. Just so, chance size, this is the contacts which has gone bad on this side. So, this looks like spare contacts, and this one's the strip failed. Thought you might find it interesting. Again, don't forget to share the video. Anyone that might be interested in it, want to know how these things work or how to fix the oven, share it. Sharing the video is important, it helps my channel grow. Thanks a lot, catch you later.
Let's have a nice scratch the floor. I might scratch the floor when I put it in. Freaking sprayer. I'm too tall for this mount. So let's just look at if I can do that. No, of course that's not metal, is it? That's metal. Okay, so that's... Oh, the battery light's flashing. That's no good. Better change batteries.